All right, so the first network we're going to talk about is using LinkedIn for professional purposes. You usually are already using LinkedIn for professional purposes. Go ahead and open up any of your web browsers. I'm just going to go with Google Chrome. doesn't matter, but open a web browser. And before we go directly to look at LinkedIn, let's take a couple of segues because social media is such a big topic. But what I want to do first is, up on the address bar, let's go to Wikipedia. You've probably heard of Wikipedia. That's been around over a decade as well. Wikipedia.org. That's the online encyclopedia. And this is interesting. I haven't, I haven't checked this. But uh, if you're using a web browser or a search, sometimes it suggests to you um, topics to search for. And very interesting. It'll be interesting to very few of us. But apparently, one of the popular searches of Wikipedia is Wikipedia the Visit, I don't know what that is, Wikipedia Doctor Who, and Wikipedia Rick and Morty. Interesting. But anyway, let's go to wikipedia.org, press enter. If you don't know about it, it's a dictionary. It's an encyclopedia in multiple languages with multiple articles. There's over 5 million articles on the English version. Yes? Just a little side note, one of the most popular research, and I Excellent. Um, hmm. homepage, uh, optimization or content. Okay, cool. I'll make a note of that and I'll touch on it later. Um, hmm, that's interesting to know. Wikipedia is one of the most trafficked sites in the world. Uh, they have so much content, and that's the that's the big secret about getting traffic to your website. Content. You're not going to have five million pages though. Uh, you're not even going to have, you know, what's the smallest one here? You're not, you're not even going to have only 894,000 pages or articles. You're not going to have that much content. But the point is, you're going to have content on your, on your website or on your social media, and that's what helps you get traffic. But what I want to do here under Wikipedia is look up the article on LinkedIn briefly. At the bottom, you can search into different languages, but I'm going to search for LinkedIn. It's one word. You have to spell it capital, but you just search for LinkedIn. I'll take a quick look about the history and topics of LinkedIn. Search LinkedIn. You're going to get the big banner at the top. They've currently got their their um, what's it called their 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 viewer drive, like PBS. They ask for donations every once in a while. Wikipedia does that as well, at least once a year. And right now it's going on to say, would you like to donate $3, $10, $100 more, etc. And I do recommend it. Wikipedia has been around for more than a decade. It's, been, it's used all over the world. It has a lot of great content. I reference it all the time. I've contributed to Wikipedia, written or rewritten articles and such. And actually, for the first time, I donated some money. And I thought, why not? You know, it's not so expensive to do a one-time donation <laughs> and such. And it helps keep the light on. So I do recommend it. Maybe you donate. But for the moment, <coughs> not at the moment. I'm looking at the article for LinkedIn, just a quick information right here. Founded in 2002. So it's been, Wikipedia's been around more, I mean LinkedIn's been around more than a decade. You might not have gotten into it until very recently. How many of you have had a LinkedIn profile for at least one year? Raise your hand. How many of you have had LinkedIn for at least five years? How many of you had Wikipedia since the begin, uh, LinkedIn since the beginning? <coughs> hmm. Okay. So it's also on the stock market. You can buy LinkedIn stock, just like you can buy stock in Disney and Coca Cola and AT and T. You can buy stock in LinkedIn. We'll take a look at its price in a moment. But it's it's a valuable company. Two billion dollars in revenue. Income though is a different story. Yeah. Um. It's one of the most traffic sites in the world. According to one metric, it's the 14th most traffic site in the world. 14th place. Uh, it has advertised from um, registration required. Their slogan, Relationships Matter. So they have a slogan which we probably didn't know about. CEO, chairman, etc. <coughs> LinkedIn is a business-oriented social network service founded in December 2002, so it's, it had its birthday. 
and launched on May 5th, 2003. It's mainly used for professional networking. As of 2015, most of the site's revenue comes from selling access to information about its users to recruiters. In 2006, LinkedIn increased to 20 million members, etc., etc. In, in October 2015, LinkedIn reports that more than 400 million acquired users in more than 200 countries and territories. So by its own measurements, LinkedIn has about 400 million users globally in 200 countries. Therefore, LinkedIn could be a very valuable tool for you to use to reach an audience, either as a person or as a business. <coughs> I'm not going to go into all of this in, all of this story. You should look at it on your own, but it's just interesting. Apparently, there was a there was a class action lawsuit in 20 in 2013, and it was settled in 2015 in favor of the LinkedIn members. I don't I never heard about it, but you can read it. I, uh, I kind of heard that they were what they were doing was going into your Yahoo to get all of your your contacts and bring them into LinkedIn at all, and then contacting your contacts, asking them uh, if they wanted to join LinkedIn. Mm. And that, that kind of happened recently. They haven't done that all. No, okay. Because mm. every time you go in there and it looks for, it'll ask you all your, if, if there, you want to link the people, it pulls it from your, uh, your, your mail contacts, like on Facebook or um, well, that's interesting. Most networks do that or, or try to do that. Twitter's going to ask you, hey, connect your contacts. Facebook's going to say, hey, connect with your contacts. They all kind of force that, but I guess their version of it was more egregious or something enough yeah, for a they lawsuit. Were actually contacting the people and hmm. telling them without their permission to contact the people with that. They didn't want it to become a spam. Hmm. Yeah, that's what it's saying right here. Reception. LinkedIn will also has some criticism, such as the sign-up process. Will then offer to send out contact invitations to all your members. Yes. She had contact. Um, I don't know if it's related to LinkedIn. They have that new thing, Brewster. What's it called? Brewster. Brewster. Brewster or something that always asking for my contacts and just the to let you know today. Well, I don't doubt that there's any new. Um, that there's any new uh, networks out there, they're always coming out. There's always versions uh, and different concepts of, of networks. So maybe during the break we can look that one up. That, that might be another one to get into. The point of um, setting up a profile on any of these networks, even these sort of ancillary uh, off the beaten path networks is perhaps one day it will take off. In the beginning, people weren't paying attention to Instagram, and now it's a very popular network. And if you're trying to get on Instagram now, perhaps your name was taken. That's the point of maybe claiming your name on these networks that maybe you're not going to use them, but at least claim your name. Because if you don't claim the name and someone else does, you really won't have any recourse to get it back. Even if your family has had that business for 20 years, whoops, you just thought about getting that Instagram now instead of three years ago, so you probably will not be able to claim that name. Uh, I'll be mentioning a bunch of networks um, that might be under your radar a little later. I want to look at one more thing here, then we'll go on. I'm curious, what's LinkedIn stock doing today? I'm going to click the link at the top to go look up the stock price at the very top right, traded as launching the quote LinkedIn Corporation $240 a share so if you had invested when LinkedIn went public probably at $20 a share $50 a share whatever it was $240 a share for this social network that doesn't actually have a product uh, and you can look at historical prices I'm curious what's it been doing this year ups and downs as usual for most stocks uh, what's it been doing in the last three years? Overall going up. At one point in December 2012, the stock was at about $105, and today it's, it's $240. So if you weather the bad, usually there's good. Five years. What about maximum? From the beginning, at the very beginning, LinkedIn stock was about $83 back in 2011. And now it's much more than $83. Although if you had bought stock at, let's say, September 2013, there was a lot of downward pressure there. 
But anyway, that's a topic for another class about the stock market and all of that. But many social networks actually nowadays are on, and many tech companies are on the stock market. Facebook is on the stock market. Twitter is on the stock market. Etsy is on the stock market. Um, some doing better than others. But if a stock price is the indication of the success of a company, this seems to be a successful company. Um, especially since it's increasing. Let's go over to... Let's, let's try this. Um, let's go to LinkedIn.com. If you have an, an account, don't sign in yet. Uh, if you're already signed in, that's okay. But go over to LinkedIn.com. This is the front page of LinkedIn.com. It asks you either to log in or to sign up or to find a colleague. I'm going to say right away at the beginning, LinkedIn is going to be different than the other networks. I'm going to say use LinkedIn selfishly. Use LinkedIn in creating connections with people that really matter and help you. Don't connect with people on LinkedIn simply because you're connected on Facebook, simply because you were high school buddies, simply because you got a business card from someone at a trade show. Connect with people on LinkedIn selfishly to get something out of that connection. They're doing the same, probably. If they're not, that's their loss. If you're going to use LinkedIn, if someone requests to connect with LinkedIn with you, you're going to, you're going to check out their profile and their content and then make the decision of why, how am I going to benefit from connecting with you. If they're going to benefit more from my connection, my endorsement and such, that's not enough. If you're going to benefit from what they have, what connections they have, what content they've posted, what recommendations they can give you and such, then connect. If simply because friends and family, that's what Facebook is for, that's what Instagram is for, that's what Pinterest is for. LinkedIn really is more of a professional network. Clearly, everyone's dressed really nicely here. So uh, use LinkedIn selfishly for personal to connect with people that will possibly help you meet the right person business-wise, uh, improve your SEO, get you more traffic, etc. When we talk about creating LinkedIn uh, a business page, that's a different matter. Uh, it should go without saying. Again, also, you're trying to connect with, you're trying to make connections that are most beneficial to you. It's okay to, to click ignore on all of those LinkedIn notifications or delete and such. Uh, people always send me these in my classes, and most of the time I ignore them. Not, not that I don't like you, it's just that I, what's in it for me? If you've just set up LinkedIn and you don't have any content, you don't even have your picture on the profile, that's my number one criteria. First of all, if you don't even have your professional picture on your LinkedIn, I'm just going to ignore it. If you do have a picture and you have it filled in, as we'll be talking about, and you have something that I might be benefiting from, then I might... Uh, I might join the connection. But really, oftentimes, I still don't do it for, for, for students and such because it could be a conflict of interest. Not that you get grades and such in this class. Over at Southwestern College, where I also teach, where I do teach classes for grades and such, I don't connect with the students there. That's a conflict of interest. They say, hey, you liked my cat picture, but you still gave me a B in my class, in the class. Why? So I don't connect with students, even on this, really, during a class, because that could be a conflict. Maybe I'm giving you preferential treatment. I don't want to do that. But you can't really do much on the home page here. You can search for people, but you still not, are not going to see too much unless you create an account. Um, we'll create an account or log in in a moment. But what I want to show you is, let's go to this address, linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. You can have a vanity address for your profile, memorable like that, if someone else hasn't claimed it. If you're John Smith, someone might have already taken John Smith. So by default, you're going to get a pretty ugly looking LinkedIn name. LinkedIn.com slash user slash 1259-767 slash Victor Campos. I want simply LinkedIn.com slash Victor Campos. 
And I think they've still made it a little awkward that they put this in part of it. I'm sure they have the engineers and the technology to have made it simply linkedin.com slash Victor Campos. But any LinkedIn profile is going to have that in part. I suppose because there is also, I think it's called company slash and then the name of a company. That's a technical engineering thing that they should have not made complicated. But anyway, if you want to go to a person's LinkedIn profile directly and you know their, their name, you can do that. Assuming the name has not been taken by another of that name. And so here is an example of my, see right there, Victor Campos, Senior Basis Administrator in the ES Group. That's not me. I don't look that angry. So here's an example of a personal LinkedIn profile. I'm not saying it's the best that you kind of profile, but it's as complete as I could make it as an example to show you about what you should be striving for and what we'll do together when we create the profile. Well, I mean, if you have a company, if you have a company, can you put that company's logo instead of a personal picture? No. For your personal account, Victor Campos, you should put your picture. For your business company, profile, definitely put your company logo there and we'll talk about creating both of those, a personal profile and a business profile. Okay, so maybe creating two of them and maybe... Yeah. Okay. Because I could be getting traffic and clients from the business page and from myself. If myself, I am part of the company in a way that I and advertising my own company, great. I can get customers that way as well. So it's okay for you to do a business one and a personal one. So that's only for LinkedIn business? Or? No, this is a regular old LinkedIn account uh, with my picture. And even for a regular account, we can still create a business one for free. Yeah, we'll see how to do that. So I've got my name. Uh, as most commonly I'm known, you will be able to create this and edit it because uh, maybe your name is William Jefferson Clinton III, but you're most known as Bill Clinton. So you should use the name that really you are most known as. So my fuller name would be Victor M. Campos Jr., etc. But I'm just putting the name I'm most known as. We're going to see a we're going to see a tagline, director of technology at Team Interactive, which can be anything. Uh, but at a glance, it should explain what you are, what you do. There's a joke. Uh, it might not be the most appropriate to say, but there's a joke that uh, is basically if you have to explain your job title in detail, you might not have a good job. Fireman, great job. Policeman, great job. Teacher, great job. I'm the person that refills the ink cartridges in the pens that then go off to the assembly line. Great job. Great job. <laughs> so, location is uh, also possibly important for you if you're trying to connect with an audience locally. So here's San Diego location, and then a general topic of what you do or what you're trying to get hired as we'll be able to see about adding current employment, previous employment, education, recommendations are valuable. Those are those recommendations that you would add perhaps a letter of recommendation in a resume. So more connections that you have, the more recommendations that you could request for your various skills and such. Look at this, a website link. That's a way to get Traffic to your website. Yes. Uh, you know, to... We're going to see about how to edit those. This one of recommendations, you have to ask your connections for that. We'll see how. Yeah. And this one on websites, so you can add it yourself, and we'll see how to do that as well. And then uh, connections. Again, you should use LinkedIn a little judiciously. Don't accept every connection. You probably some here that say 500 plus connections. They stop counting at 500 because really, are all of those connections going to be that valuable to you? Let me show you something else here. If I search on Google for my name, Victor Campos, there will be many results from many Victor Campos's in the world, but the second highest result on a Google search is my LinkedIn. Who's No, I was not born in 1935. That is none. 
and was not in Scarface. <laughs> I was a, be a mere toddler at the point. <laughs> so, a mere toddler. <laughs> but I was a good acting toddler. Oh, well, you're doing <laughs> So, the second highest result, which is me, is my LinkedIn. The point of that is that that's, uh, again, <clears throat> generating traffic. Um, my main website is not listed there. Many of the results here are not my main website. The, there is one that is my main website, uh, but most of these are ancillary profiles. That's the point of social media, one of the points, that the more of your content that exists online, the more that the search engines will find you and give you traffic. <clears throat> um, so it's going to say join LinkedIn for the full profile, etc. We'll do that in a moment. Yes? Yes, um, I believe at the moment you still have to be a person before creating a business. But you don't have to use the personal one. You just need an entree, an entry point. You need an entry point to get into LinkedIn and then create the business. Uh, perhaps, um, like Facebook, perhaps think about it like Facebook and Google Plus. You need a personal account first before creating business. But you don't need to fill in anything relevant in the bus in the personal one. And you can make it completely private and never use it. But you just log in with the personal to then create the business pages. Like Facebook, like Google Plus. There's a summary. This again is related to SEO, search engine optimization. You should I, I believe they give you a limit, like maybe a thousand characters. Uh, you don't really need to write that much, but we will see that the space that they give us for the summary, you should use and be as specific as possible, because these are all keywords that could help you get found. I've gotten traffic, uh, I've gotten a job or two via searching. Someone said they, they searched uh, Photoshop experts in San Diego, and then I did a job in Photoshop for them and they found me through searching because I've got these sorts of keywords um, and you know the keywords of, of the web design and San Diego and such and they were able to find me and get me a job. We'll look at experience. You can either be connected with a real company that exists like the colleges or your own business that you make up and add to LinkedIn. So this is this is our company, and it has a presence on LinkedIn. And that also has some nuances. It's not as full featured as the personal profile, but we will see that when we create the business profile, we are able to to do some marketing, to do some branding, our address and contact and uh, what we do and so forth. So basically LinkedIn is like resumes 2.0. It, it allows you to put your experience and your contacts and all of that, but because it's digital it has more features. Yes? Would you answer the difference between paid LinkedIn and a free account? And what, what, is there an advantage to it? I'll be touching on it briefly, honestly, uh, because I don't have a lot of experience in it to really say a lot about it. I've been successful without the paid version. So that's what we'll be talking about. And uh, there is a value to the paid one because it lets you, it gives you more features. It gives you more access to connect with more people and other such things. Uh, but I don't have a, a lot of the experience to really go into it in detail, but we can look it up. Um, and from what I understand, it could be valuable, but you know, it is what thirty dollars a year or more. Um, so we can still. It does allow you to, to reach out to people not in your network, yes. email them. And I, I mean, I, try, I, I, I don't pay for it. I don't want to pay for it. I thought that that would be an advantage. That could be an advantage because, as we'll see, we really can only connect anyway with people that supposedly we already have a real life connection with. And so to connect with someone. 
that we don't have a real-life connection is a little bit more difficult with the free version. With the paid version, apparently, it's a little easier. But still, it's up to them to ignore yeah. your connection. Because what's in it for me to connect with you that you're not a CEO like me? So there are advantages of it, but I don't know enough of the, about them to really speak about it. But that's one of them, that you can connect with more people. We will see that we've got a section for projects. Uh, it might make sense really as me as a web designer, marketer, etc. These are the projects, these are the companies that I'm working with and so forth. But that still would make sense for whatever things you're doing most likely. What sort of project are you involved in? Are you in some sort of charity organization? Um, are you uh, you know, donating your time. There's actually a section, I believe, on charity. It's very full-featured. But projects would be any sort of jobs you're doing, and then you can uh, you can go into detail about what you're doing there. That's just another way to show um, your skills and your connections and such. And these can be linked to real companies to vouch for that, because anyone can write anything. People get in trouble all the time for padding their resume a little too much. Here's a digital version of a resume where there is an active link to a, to a real result, goes to a real client and such, to further vouch for your skills. There's a section on skills that we'll look at. Again, you can write you have any kind of skills you want, but the thing about this is then your, your connections will help you vouch for that. Your connections will, will click yes or agree that yes, he has experience in web design, he has experience in SEO. So even if I, if I write many, many things there, they might not be true, but your connections will help you keep, will keep you honest because they will be clicking to, to agree with what you have added as a skill. Languages, education, interests. Uh, recommendations. Again, this is the modern resume, and so here we can have um, recommendations of people you've uh, met with in real life or worked with, and and um, they can vouch for you. We'll talk about groups. Groups are valuable. If you've taken my social media class, uh, specifically the the Google Plus class, in there I talk about that Google Plus has a feature called Communities, which Google Plus has hundreds of millions of users. You're trying to reach an audience, you go to Communities, where people congregate on a specific topic. LinkedIn has something similar, groups. People that are interested in a certain topic congregate here. You can join groups, most of them are uh, take anyone, some of them you have to uh, sort of apply and then they'll they'll vet you and then vouch for you and then you can join. And the point of then being in a group is then you're connected with other like-minded people and then you can interact with them, possibly join, uh, possibly forge more connections and maybe even learn a thing or two. So we'll get into all of these details. I'm just showing in general a particular profile and then one of the big things people always ask is how do I get my name like that? Because right now you might have a name that's just a bunch of numbers and letters and your name. That's the default. One of the first things I'll show you is how to fix that. So any questions on any of this so far? Mm -hmm. What about format? Like, is it better to put bullets or um, what's the best way? Like, I guess people spend very little time looking at it. If they're really interested in you, they might read more. But you have like blocks of is that the best way? Well, YouTube, I mean, uh, LinkedIn nowadays really guides you to certain formats. So there's going to be a suggestion of having a projects block and a suggestion of having a, an education block and such. And depending on the section, depending on the block, it might have bullet points or not. Um, so really, it's sort of a moot point because LinkedIn itself will sort of guide you on what's a good, <clears throat> on what's a good format and I would follow along his suggestions. So we're going to either log in or create an account in one moment. I want to do one more thing and then we'll get into it. Um, I want to mention a website, Social Media Examiner. 
There's many websites on all of these topics of social media and marketing and web design, so many of them. If you guys know some also, I'd be happy to, to, to know about them. But here first, I'm going to mention socialmediaexaminer.com. Well, let me mention that in a moment. Socialmediaexaminer.com, they are, a, this is your guide to the social media jungle. They post articles on everything regarding social media on a regular basis. They uh, might also have a pop-up that has, why not buy this or that, or you get this free book, just put your email. But if you ignore that stuff, missing Facebook pages, what to do when Facebook takes your page away. That was posted uh, today. Um, how to re how to retarget with Instagram ads? How to post curated content across multiple social platforms? That's always a question people have when they take these social media classes. They say, "Well, now I'm busy running my business, and I've just got my website, and now I've also got to run Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and all of that." Short answer is yes. Long mm -hmm. answer is yes. Um, but it's complicated because you've got a lot to do. So here's apparently a great post on how to do this for multiple platforms. And what I like about this site is oftentimes they've got an article that you can read and a nice graphic that, to digest it all. But they've also oftentimes got the audio version of it. They've got a podcast. And I wish uh, we would have the time and all of that for me to teach a, a day uh, on podcasting, because that could be another avenue that could be very valuable. Basically, a podcast is a, is a radio show on the internet. Anyone can create a podcast. Uh, it could be simply you talking to an audience and sharing your expertise. Podcasts are often published weekly, maybe even daily, maybe monthly, quarterly, whatever. It's just that you're publishing content to get found by the search engines. iTunes is a big player in this. Most people think to subscribe to a podcast, you need iTunes. But any good podcast is found through multiple sources. iTunes, Android, uh, SoundCloud, Libsyn, etc. They're found. You can find podcasts just about anywhere if you set it up right. And this is just a, this is a radio show. This is a 40-minute episode. I, I haven't heard this. I don't know if it's one person talking or a round table or a couple people or what. But this is another aspect of that written text. Some people will want to sit and read it. Some people will skim through it and only read what they really care. And some people will download it and listen to it on the commute. And so podcasting could be a thing to get into in the future. I don't teach any class on podcasting at the moment. I might in the future. But I think they're pretty valuable. And this whole website itself is pretty valuable. They uh, make their money by selling you access to different things. And also, they're part of a, a conference series, the Social Media Marketing World. And it's being held here in San Diego. I'm going to take a quick look at it. And the thing about conferences, there's so many tech conferences out there. And they have value, definitely. They're going to connect you with industry titans and such. Guy Kawasaki, for example, he's big in social media. Um, but the thing is, they are often a bit pricey. If you drill down, eventually you will see the prices. One ticket, social media marketing world, single payment, $967. Save $530 if you buy early. Because this year's already gone next year. Social Media Marketing World, two passes, $439. So yeah, this can be expensive, more than more expensive than Comic-Con. What justifies this is Guy Kawasaki and all of these people that are attached to this conference and all the knowledge that you'll get and the swag that you'll get, the industry professionals and the networking opportunities and the opening night networking party. All of that stuff. They have uh, they have panels. You visit a panel. How to get the most out of Pinterest from someone that works at Pinterest? How to really supercharge your LinkedIn profile? 
with people that have 10,000 connections. And so all of these conferences are, are about that, connecting with, with people, learning something, but at a, at a pretty, pretty penny. It travels through different cities, I believe, and the current one is in San Diego. But the current one, well, April is the next one, 2016, April in San Diego. Okay, so different location in the United States. Depending on the, on the convention, yes. I wish. <laughs> no, I'm presenting. No, I, I wish. But uh, if you ignore all the paid stuff and all the pop-ups from here, you're going to get a lot of great content. This book right here, the, so the Industry Report, is also, also useful. Knowledge is power. And so this is an example of what other people are doing at the moment. And it's a free book. You just have to give them your, e your email, which, guess what? Then they're going to send you weekly emails. But you can unsubscribe. Let's say you ignore all of that, the paid conference, the email list, and all of that. Let's say you ignore all of that. These articles still are totally free for you to, to, to view. These podcasts are free for you to listen. And you've got search. It's a bit small, but do you see a search button near the right side? Browse categories. I'm going to search LinkedIn. What do they have to say about LinkedIn? Do you mean LinkedIn, LinkedIn groups, LinkedIn features, LinkedIn sharing, strategy, recommendations? I'm just going to search for just plain old LinkedIn at the moment. Five LinkedIn marketing tips to grow your business. How to build a LinkedIn marketing plan that delivers ongoing results. Because really, the thing about all social media is I can teach you how to set it up and how to use it and such, but there's still a whole aspect of having a plan. What applies to one person might not apply to another person. If you take my SEO class, in there we develop a marketing plan and a company profile because Anyone can create any of these accounts and start using them, and maybe you'll get some success. But if you have a plan or a goal, you'll have more success. All the big companies, big, medium, and small companies that have a marketing plan are the most effective. Love them or hate them, but Apple is one of the biggest companies of all, of all time, of all the world. They're so profitable, so valuable, so effective, so people are so loyal because of a very, very strong marketing arm, and of course their products are pretty cool. Samsung is very powerful and, and very followed, and it has a marketing arm, a marketing uh, section, and marketing is its own thing. Marketing is a college major. You can get a degree in it, you know, a master's degree in marketing and such. That's a huge topic. But in my SEO class, we touch the tip of the iceberg of marketing, and here, you can educate yourself, building a marketing plan. I would recommend to often, when you check any website to educate yourself, check the date. Try to get articles that are as new as possible. This one's already two years old. Uh, some content is evergreen that it'll stick around. The marketing concepts really have been around decades. They're just applied slightly differently in technology. Marketing still applied back in 1915 when companies were trying to sell their snake oil. But it is still, the concepts of marketing still apply in the digital world, just tweaked for the digital world. And so perhaps this article, which is two years old, is not so old. But sometimes if it says how to set up a LinkedIn profile and, and it's got some very detailed instructions from three years ago, most likely the network changed things. Networks change all the time. And so when it's telling you, click on this button, and that button's no longer there, you know, that's an example of an older article. So try to get as new as possible within the year, even newer might be nicer within the month, but sometimes this content is evergreen. And sometimes if you go look at the older posts, there might be a link to, this has been updated, click here. So this was published then, and there might be a link to the newest version, or it might say on it that it's been updated recently. So this is one of the sites that um, 
that I recommend. We'll be talking about others as well. Um, but what we'll do at this point is uh, we'll, we'll take a moment to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to get back into LinkedIn. I'm going to go through the process, even though I already have one. I'm going to go through the process after the break of creating a new LinkedIn, simply to show you those different aspects and nuances that might not you might have skipped the first time. I would recommend that when we come back, we do create a brand new one. We can make up the name. We can do whatever we want. It doesn't matter. And then we'll delete the profile. Or you can use your currently existing one and apply what we're learning to your currently existing profile. But again, I highly recommend just make a new fake one. We can delete it later. It's 1040. Let's take a break until 1050. And then we'll go on.